metric system in place in France a couple hundred years ago. And since that time, it has caught on. And so today, you have most, most of the countries in the world use the metric system. So if you ask a person how tall they are, they're either going to tell you so many feet or so many inches or so many meters and so many centimeters. If you ask a person how much they weigh, they'll step on a scale. And again, you go back to the metric system. You weigh either so many pounds and so many ounces, or you weigh so many grams or so many kilograms. Complexion tone. Right now, there is not a standard in existence for complexion tone. And it's time that one be established. If, for example, they wanted to describe a person, say a little girl gets lost, they call the police. They say, well, my, my daughter wandered off. She's uh, 16 years old, she's four and a half feet tall, and she weighs uh, 90 pounds. And her complexion is, and then they draw blank, because there's no standard in place to describe a person's complexion. And so, others, other means that your body has so many physical characteristics. You could describe your blood pressure. You could describe your, your hearing. You could describe your blood type. There are many, many physical attributes that would go under this other, and you could extend this matrix all the way through the wall because your body has thousands of physical characteristics. So uh, this is what you would use if you wanted to describe what a person looks like. These are not ethnic. If I said uh, I wanted to pick uh, a lady four feet tall, well, here's height. Let's say we set up a scale here. You pick four feet. You can find someone in Cuba. There's a lady in Japan, four feet tall. There's a lady from uh, Mexico, four feet tall. There, there are people all over the world, four feet tall. If I wanted to pick someone who weighed 100 pounds, you could find someone in Burma. You could go to Saudi Arabia and find someone who weighs 100 pounds. Again, you could go all over the world and find someone who weighs 100 pounds. If you pick any given complexion tone, once again, you're going to find people all over the world. And so in order to conduct this experiment, we, we, wanna, we want to refer to units of measure. And years ago, a gentleman who I'm sure you've heard of, a man by the name of Isaac Newton, took a beam of light, sunlight, and directed it onto a prism. And when it hit the prism, it broke into a spectrum. Have you seen that spectrum before? Yes. Okay. That spectrum combines all the different colors of visible light. Any color that you see represents some combination of those colors. And you have what are called primary colors. They can be additive, as in the case of light, or they can be subtractive, as in the case of pigments, like when you mix paint a bucket of paint. You take subtractive primaries and you mix them in the right proportions so that you get the color that you want. Now, we have the sa a similar situation when we're trying to define the human complexion tone. And again, you can see here, we, uh, well, before I, before I get ahead of myself, I want to say that uh, there are three, three ways that you can conceive of a standard for defining the human complexion tone. One of the things that you might do, you might, uh, you might measure uh, the concentration of melanin. Melanin is a pigment that gives every person their complexion. 
But how would you get that? How would you get that sample? You'd have to cut a patch of their skin. Most people aren't willing to sacrifice a patch of skin. So that, that concentration of melanin is out. We can't use that very conveniently. Another, another way to do it is to measure the characteristics of a light. And again, you can measure the wavelength. You know that light moves at C. C is the speed of light. You remember Einstein's equation, E equals MC squared. He was talking about the speed of light. But the, the speed of a, a light wave is, is a product of the wavelength times the uh, frequency. So in order to measure that, in other words, the colors vary because they have different frequencies. But in order to measure that, you need instruments. And most people don't walk around carrying instruments with them. If someone wants to describe another person, they can't say 99 times out of 100, they can't say, well, I measured this person and uh, I'm, I, I you know, want to describe the light waves. They correspond to them. So for purposes of an experiment like this, since there is no international standard, I, I have just arbitrarily taken five gradations, graduated complexions, call them A, B, C, D, and E. And each one of these pictures represents a person of one of those complexion tones. This lady here is E, and as you know with your x-axis, you start over at the far left at zero, and then as you increase, you go to the, to the right. So this lady here would be considered to have the lowest concentration of melanin. So she's A, and she's got a little bit more melanin, so she's B. He's got a little bit more melanin, so as you go to the right, from left to right, he's C. Here's D. And uh, finally, E over to the far right. So what we want to do, we want to conduct an experiment. And in this experiment, we want to make a determination of the level of correlation between the human complexion tone and ethnic identification. Is there a correlation? Does your complexion tone determine your ethnicity? In other words, when you know, once you know a person's complexion, will that tell you the sum total of these four ethnic symbols? Or will it even tell you any of them? Will it tell you anything about them? So we're going to conduct an experiment, and we're going to go through this experiment, which is written up here in this write-up of a scientific experiment. And there's one page here, which is called the examiner's data sheet on page four. And anyone who's interested in this can call me. If you want a copy of this data sheet, I can either email it to you or I can fax it to you. The examiner's data sheet is page four, and the examinee's data sheet is page five. The examiner is going to be the person outside on this side of the curtain, and the examinee is the person who will be examined on this side of the curtain. And we'll have our delegation from the Virginia International University participating in this experiment. And then this will only be, of course, a dry run or practice um, experiment. It won't be the real thing because we all know who we are. In the, real, in the real experiment, the person walking up being the...